So on the one hand, we have uh, positive news on the vaccine. On the other hand, of course, corona positive cases continue to climb in the country. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. He's one of the country's leading virologists. He's an award-winning virologist, won some of the country's most premier prizes. Joined by Dr. Shahid Jamil. Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Jamil, uh, on the show uh, tonight. Thanks very much. I want to, first of all, come to the good news. Let's start with some of the good news. This news on the vaccine, both Oxford and Moderna reporting positive results. Now, across the world, people are saying 12 to 18 months minimum for a vaccine. What's your sense, sir? I will stick, still stick to the 12 to 18 months because <clears throat> it's not just the good results of a vaccine, but also the approval process and enough capacity to manufacture the vaccine and enough doses of vaccine to be manufactured to be given to everyone who needs the vaccine. So yes, while this is good news, uh, we should look forward to it, but let's not uh, put you know, all our money on the vaccine, continue to do what is advisable to do, and that is to wear a mask and maintain distance and all of that. But, but you go along with uh, most viral, virologists and uh, epidemiologists who tell me till we have a vaccine, you will continue to have to live with the virus? Absolutely. Uh, Even after we have a vaccine, we'll have to live with the virus because mm -hmm. uh, the world capacity to make vaccines is about 8 billion doses a year. Mm -hmm. But all 8 billion doses are not going to be just corona vaccine i mean there are other childhood vaccines to be made mm -hmm. uh, so you know don't expect everyone in the world to get vaccinated with this vaccine uh, whatever vaccine uh, comes more than one vaccine that come uh, in in the short term so so yes uh, we will have to live with the virus let me come dr jamil first to of course uh the uh, the sense that one gets that while India is reaching the 1 million mark, there are virologists like you who actually seem to believe that given what the ICMR zero survey has suggested, the number of patients infected or people infected in India are much higher. Do you believe they are what, 10, 20 times higher than the numbers being uh, reflected at the moment? Well, if we believe the zero survey that ICMR did in the end of April, uh, we showed a 0.73% zero prevalence. And if I were to extrapolate that to the Indian population of 138 crores, uh, that tells me that in the end of April, we had 10 million infections. And if the outbreak is growing at a rate of about, uh, doubling at a rate of about 20 days, then today that places us at about 150, 160 million infections. But all of that depends on that zero prevalence rate. If that rate is correct, then this figure must be correct. Those are very, very high numbers, sir. They are, they are. So I'm, I'm hoping the zero prevalence uh, rate that ICMR gave uh, in its uh, first zero prevalence study is not the correct rate. I'm simply doing the arithmetic. I didn't produce those numbers. You know, the, the other question I want to ask you at this moment is that there was a sense when coronavirus first broke, uh, Dr. Jamil, uh, Jari, that it was primarily a respiratory infection, pneumonia, viral pneumonia. Now there are patients with blood clots, virus can target the transport of oxygen. Do you believe that COVID-19 is more a vascular disease as we come to know more about it? Is there much more about COVID, the, the symptoms now seem to be, uh, in a way, far greater than we thought earlier? Well, that's true. And as time goes on, you learn more and more about any disease. And we're doing that for uh, COVID as well. Uh, but, you know, yes, it did start out as uh, a respiratory infection. But very soon people realized that it causes a fairly bad cytokine storm in some people, which is uh, essentially means is that the body's immune system starts reacting to itself uh, because of, uh, you know, as part of fighting the virus. Uh, so yes, because of that, we're seeing a lot of systemic, uh, you know, symptoms. And everything that you mentioned, blood mm -hmm. clots, uh, you know, effects on the gut, mm -hmm. uh, effects on the brain, uh, kidneys, all that is part of that. Because uh, 
you know, uh, doctor, there are some uh, uh, some recent evidence that suggests that uh, there's a post-COVID syndrome in children as well. They are saying that it mimics another uh, similar disease, the Kawasaki disease. How serious is this? Because uh, at one level, a number of people getting uh, well at home through home quarantine, mild symptoms, and then we hear every now and then of these very serious cases. So, you know, this seems to be a virus that is very difficult to capture very easily. Well, that's true for most diseases, Rajdeep. Uh, you look at the maximum uh, presentation, and the maximum presentation is that 80% people have either asymptomatic or very mild infection. Mm -hmm. They don't need hospitalization. They can simply isolate themselves at home and be fine. Uh, yet, uh, the mortality that we are seeing, the complications we are seeing with COVID are far more than something that you will see with a normal respiratory virus like a common cold virus or even uh, a bad influenza. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the mortality rates, population mortality rates are likely to be about tenfold more than what you would get uh, with seasonal flu. But, you know, the, it's not still not a really a runaway virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if you historically look at other pandemics, and most people like to compare this to the 1918 Spanish flu, Spanish flu infected 500 million people. Mm -hmm which was about a third of the world population at that time. Uh, so put this into perspective. I understand that 1918 was a very different time than 2020. Technology has moved, healthcare has moved, our understanding has moved. And it is because of the science and the research and the understanding mm -hmm. that today you are announcing two optimistic results from a vaccine within six months of the discovery of the disease. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are both sides to it, yes. And and to answer your original question, different people do react differently. Mm -hmm. You and I will react differently even to paracetamol or to aspirin. One of us will have aspirin cure our headache mm -hmm. uh, with one tablet, another may need two tablets. Uh, so that, that happens all the time. Uh, we're, we're dealing with humans. We are an outbred population. So is that basically then to do with immunity levels? It's boiling down to immunity levels because we've seen in India a number of patients with comorbidities particularly uh, affected adversely. On the other hand, those with high levels of immunity are able to recover fast. So is it really boiling down to immunity levels? Everything will boil down to immunity. A virus like this, everything will boil down to immunity. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if you look at the uh, mortality rates per million population. Mm -hmm. It's not just India, but all of South Asia, all of Southeast Asia shows very low mortality per million population compared to something like US or Western Europe. Uh, so yes, we may have an innate immunity uh, to this coronavirus infection because of other infections. Could that be because, as some are suggesting, some virologists are suggesting that in, in the context of India, because we've had a massive immunization program, the BCG vaccine, I know certain state governments are now looking at making sure that BCG vaccine is uh, as uh, prevalent as possible. Do you believe that that could be helping immunity to that extent? Are you hopeful? I'm hopeful, but I need to see evidence of it. And uh, as yet, I have not seen any evidence of it. Uh, there is a large trial that's going on in Australia, mm -hmm. which is testing BCG, uh, and it's in phase three right now to look at the efficacy of BCG in COVID, mm -hmm. and we will know. But remember, uh, UK has one of the highest case fatality rates in COVID, around 15%, mm -hmm. compared to the global average of about five, five and a half percent. UK stopped BCG vaccination only in the early years of this century. Mm -hmm. So there are people in UK who have taken co uh, BCG uh, and they have not found any difference in the severity of the disease or mortality in those who got BCG and with those who didn't get BCG. So I think the jury is still out on it. You know, also, of course, and, and doctor, you've, uh, you've done a lot of research on this. There are, this is uh, 
there are other viruses in the air this is the season of dengue in some parts yeah. of the country uh, you know how do, how do you see corona at a time is this excessive focus on corona taking our eye off the ball when it comes to other viruses that are still prevalent absolutely and uh, so far data shows that morbidity and mortality due to other diseases uh, are suffering because of covid and honestly my biggest worry today mm -hmm. uh, is that the dengue season is upon us the malaria season is upon us in another two months we'll have the flu season upon us you know the present the clinical presentation of all of these diseases and covid is the same you get high fever so let's say you get high fever and go to a hospital mm -hmm. and they find that you are negative for corona will they will they not admit you because you don't have corona will you have dengue and not get treatment will you have malaria and not get treatment so i think we need to put together a proper clinical standard operating protocol mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you know hospitals should know what to do in case uh, you know patients show up like this everything is not going to be corona in the days ahead you know but but doctor the, the big question people are asking is you said the vaccine 12 to 18 months away will things get worse before they get better just the number sheer number of cases if some of the numbers that you've thrown up today are true the cases will continue to multiply we are at 30000 a day at the moment that could keep increasing isn't it well it is increasing on a daily basis our our growth rate is about 3% per day so it is growing uh, and i keep saying that the only way we are going to control this is to follow physical distancing is to everyone to wear a mask in public mm -hmm. that's the only way i mean i see a lot of people wearing masks mm -hmm. but they're wearing mask on their chin and not their mouth and nose uh, a colleague of mine has thrown up a very interesting question, uh, Doctor. He wants to know about a blood type link and a mystery of how more men seem to be getting affected at the moment than women. Is there any research to suggest that? Yes, there is. There is data to suggest that men are getting more affected. And uh, people believe that it may have something to do with sex hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, it is known for other diseases also men and women are not equally affected and therefore when vaccine trials happen when drug trials happen it is very important to test them both on men and women mm -hmm. uh, just like you would test on uh, male and female mice in an animal study mm -hmm. you also need to test it on uh, on both uh, both genders in conclusion yes. so there is there is data in conclusion i want to ask you uh, give us some sign of the glass half full what are the hopeful signs that you are seeing in all the numbers that we've thrown up is it somewhere in recovery rates that are slowly climbing up uh, or, or or is it in the fact that mortality rates as you said in south asia much lower than uh, most western countries as india's top virologist what is the good news that you can share today well i think amid all the gloom there is a lot of good news uh, the first good news is that the world of research, the world of science has given us 140 plus vaccine candidates which are in various stages of trial today. Mm -hmm. The world of science and research has given us multiple drugs that have been repurposed to use in this disease. And all this has happened, frankly, within the last three, four months. Mm -hmm. The good news for India and all of South Asia is that our mortality per million population is far less than what we see in US and Western Europe. Uh, so, you know, all those are good things. And, you know, maybe even in the high numbers, there may be a silver lining that if more people have been infected and they're not showing up in hospitals, maybe we are slowly moving towards herd immunity. I understand that ICMR is going to come out with another zero survey very soon. Mm -hmm. And we'll wait to see what the results of that zero survey show. What's the bad news, doctor, in conclusion? <laughs> well, the bad news is the, the, the way the outbreak is expanding, uh, you know, globally. Uh, and the, the most advanced country in the world uh, seems to be the most affected. Uh, and so, you know, while, uh, while technology can help,
mm. to an extent we must never forget that pandemics diseases are dependent largely on human behavior and this is what we are seeing uh, that technology can help to a certain extent if you want to continue to be stupid mm. you will be affected Dr. So Jus my advice is wear a mask. Right, wear a mask. Physical distancing. Stick to the protocol, uh, and and wash your hands. Of course, uh, all Absolutely. the basic protocol. Keep that. This is a dangerous uh, virus. But as you reminded us, don't take your eye off uh, the ball of other viruses. Also, as a result of this right. focus on Corona, Doctor, it's been right. a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. We hope to uh, come back to you uh, in the months ahead. as we continue to track this corona uh, curve i know you don't often come on tv so i'm glad you made an exception for us thank you very much pleasure rajiv thank you very Pleasure. much for joining us okay hi everyone preeti choudhury here hope you like this video for latest news and analysis like and subscribe to the india today youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated thank you for watching